The sound you hear is what some experts claim to be a Bigfoot scream. Recorded in the state of Washington by a group of campers in 1971, it is regarded as the highest quality audio of the creature ever captured. Hello! Welcome to Bigfoot Real Encounters. We're glad to have you stop by. We'd also like to take this time to invite you to share your encounter. You can send your stories to the email bfrealencounters at mail.com where we will feature your story with all of the respect that it deserves. So send your stories in bfrealencounters at mail.com we look forward to hearing from you and your great stories soon. Hello everybody, welcome to Bigfoot Real Encounters. I'd like to welcome any new viewers to the channel as well as all the returning ones. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I do have an announcement to make. I have started a private group on Facebook. It is called Bigfoot Anonymous. Now the purpose of this was inspired by listening to Facts by How to Hunt, Steve Isdall's channel. One of his viewers uh, emailed him uh, with one of his encounters and as uh, Steve does he was reading it and the gentleman mentioned that uh, he wished that he could meet with others who have had encounters and sit and talk back and forth with other encounterees maybe shall we say maybe I coined a new term there I don't know but anyway you, you get the the drift of it he wanted to talk to others that have had encounters and Steve suggested to have added in the comments section on his videos and that's a good idea but I got to thinking okay why don't I open up a, a private group on Facebook where people can do that now this has uh, the ability to uh, go into chat rooms even video chat rooms uh, where people can get with each other and uh, discuss your encounters the idea is to help people okay now I am NOT going to use this as a source of stories for this YouTube channel and one of the rules is that uh, anything that is put up on this page stays on the page. If anybody wishes to take their story any further, uh, to have it publicly uh, produced uh, or read, you know, like in this type of format, they're going to have to go outside and make the effort on their own to do that. I'm not going to take anything from this group. So that's uh, laid out in the foundation and in the rules. So, uh, if you'd like to uh, go to Bigfoot Anonymous in Facebook, just go up to the upper left-hand corner of the Facebook, the little magnifying glass icon where you search. Just type in the two words, Bigfoot Anonymous, and uh, you should see this private group. There's three questions that you have to ask, and it's concerning uh, honesty and uh, privacy type of thing. And uh, then you can join and uh, start sharing stories back and forth wish with each other. With the ability to do chat and go into rooms and that type of thing. whole idea is so that you guys can compare notes. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, learn from each other. Help each other get things off your chest. So, it's there for you. I mean, go ahead and use it. I'll actually put a link down in the description. Uh, so that you can click on it go directly to the group if you wish so and uh, as we're going to go state by state and uh, continuing on uh, we're going to take a look at South Carolina today all right it looks like we're going into the summer of 1993 month of July South Carolina in Berkeley County this one reads first of all I don't believe in Sasquatches Second, I don't care if you believe me or not. Nobody does. 
except the person that was with me. As a boy, I just about lived on the banks of the Santee. Every summer, my grandparents would camp on the Santee River. My granddad would take me out of school on the last day of school year, and we would go straight to the Santee River and just about stay all summer. My granddad used to tell us stories of a bear or something that looks like one. My grandma would make him stop because it would scare me so. She'd just tell me he's trying to scare me so I didn't ever believe him. Until one hot summer night about 18 years later, a group of friends wanted to go camping but wanted to go somewhere real secluded. Since I was always in the woods, they asked if I knew of any place. I told them that I did know of a place on the Santee River about a mile from the dam. The next thing I know, plans were set to go. A girlfriend of mine at that time wanted to go also, so I gave everyone direction on how to get there and my girlfriend and I would set up a day early and see them the next day there. I haven't been to this place since my granddad passed away. It was hard on me to go back, but I felt like I was ready to try again 10 or so years later. The Santee Lake and around it is swampy, and the lake is full of stumps, a lot of moss in the trees. It's a very beautiful place to go, but not too many people go to the river side of the dam. The river starting from the dam is 51 miles from the ocean. I know this because my mother caught a flounder there and someone took a picture of it and put it in the paper. They told the story of it and that it was 51 miles from the ocean. I know all about that river and I know where the great swamp fox is buried way back on the river also. Anyway, my girlfriend and I got to Wilson's Landing about 3 p.m. on a Friday. That's a bait shop, just behind the dam. From there, the paved road turns into a dirt and mud. We drove about a mile back into the woods along the river to a place we used to camp. Nothing's changed one bit, except for the trash on the river. The river is at some points about 200 yards wide and a foot deep in some places. It's only 20 feet wide and 15 feet deep or so. When the water comes out of the dam, it is split in two by an island. I have never been on that island. It's very swampy and full of snakes. My uncle still hunts on it, though, as a matter of fact, this is why I'm telling this. He has heard something there and doesn't know what it is. So I told him my story, and he's the only person who did not laugh. You name it, it's on that island. Snakes, wild hogs, deer, lots of deer. People say they've seen bear and gators. I'm now saying there's something that walks on two legs and it's not a bear. As I was saying, we drove way back there and started to set up camp. To our right, there's a cleft about 50 feet high with bushes and whatnot on it. You know, I'm not uh, going to make a big story out of this. I'm just going to tell you what happened. Where in the woods it's dark, we hear things on the river. My girlfriend, who was new to this camping thing, kept asking me, what was that on every little thing? That was an owl. That's a frog. That's a deer jumping into the river from the island. Are you sure someone isn't down there throwing bricks in the water? I told her it would have to be cement block to make that loud of a sound. But I will take the light and shine down to the river and look. I went over to the edge and shined all around and didn't see anything. The noise stopped also. So everything's fine for about 30 minutes. Then I mean deer were jumping in that river like crazy. I have to admit and it uh, could have been her asking all those questions. I was getting a little nervous. Then it happened. Something was coming up that cleft, and I mean it was breaking branches, and you could hear the dirt falling down from the weight of it. There's no way a deer can climb that bank. 
it was getting closer and closer and it didn't take but one what out of her to get me in the truck looking for my gun couldn't find it and I was yelling out to her asking where's my gun she answered I don't know from the passenger seat uh, but here's the keys let's go I jumped in fired up the truck and started driving out praying I wouldn't get stuck not here not now we made it to the dirt road and I hung a right we left everything at camp food tent lantern burning and somewhere my gun I've never been that scared in my life I must have drove 50 feet and then I slammed on the brakes and yank hair left and stop facing uh, the way we were leaving what are you doing she asked I grew up in these woods on this river and I'm gonna find out what's back there she didn't say a word I started off and was going about two miles an hour and looking with my high beams on looking for something deer or bear or something we started around the curve to the left just around the curve is the drive to camp I don't want to go there so I told her we would drive up a little past camp and turn around I didn't go maybe five or ten feet past the drive when this thing stepped out in front of us I hit the brakes what is it she asked I don't know let me back up so I can see all I saw at first and she saw was two long hairy legs I started backing up so my lights would spot it better since it was way too close to the truck God is my witness and her this was no bear this thing was maybe seven eight feet tall big hairy and wet it didn't stand real straight like you and me would but more at a slump from the waist up it had the reddest eyes I've ever seen and it just looked at us frozen looking not moving at all just standing there oh my god my granddad was telling the truth after all then I just looked to his left and leaned as his legs started to turn then the other taking about three foot stride until it was out of sight gone into the woods this thing walked on two feet and was not a bear Sasquatch a hairy creature like human being reported to exist in the northwestern US and western Canada and said to be a primate between 6 to 15 feet tall called also Bigfoot hello I live in South Carolina I said earlier that I don't believe in Sasquatches but how am I to explain what we saw one night that changed me and her forever the next day we saw those footprints and they were bigger than mine I saw the cleft and all the broken branches and the dirt that was dug out from it nobody will believe me when I tell this story but that's okay I don't care I know what I saw and that's that this was seven years ago and the only reason I'm thinking about it now is because of my uncle who was telling me something last night something he heard in the swamp woods on the island of the Santee River we also noticed it could have been just the area but we smelled an awful smell like dead fish or animal it could have been just a change in the wind from the river a lot of times when the river drops fish get stuck in the pools on the rocks the water dries on the fish die and stink I don't think much of it I couldn't smell anything on the road with it standing in front of me because the windows were up well that's quite a story my goodness it's uh, actually very scary and uh, what thing that I like about this is uh, he didn't really believe in it and uh, he, he's went and told it anyways he doesn't care if people believe him or not now and uh, that's one thing that I'm trying to get across to folks if you've had an encounter don't worry about what people think you can get the story out there it'll help you if you've had a negative effect telling it seems to help people so go ahead and tell your story whether on my channel or somebody else's just get that story out there 
also it gives us other details that we can uh, look into that gives us a better picture of uh, what these uh, beings do and how they do it and how people react how they react and all those things so we're glad to have this and if you happen to be listening to this and this is your encounter you read this report I would love to hear from you perhaps you have some additional information and maybe also uh, you have a story from your uncle who heard something about that island and stuff and uh, maybe you'd like to get that out to the public we can help you that and we can share your story BF real encounters at mail.com once again, before I go into other stories, I'd like to encourage you to send in and share your encounter. Also, like, share, subscribe. Check out the links in the description below. Jeffrey Lilly's new book has been uh, published. It's down in the, in the description below. It's Bigfoot and Stellar's Jay's Day at the River. It's a book written for children. I have uh, had the opportunity to read it before it was published. Uh, Jeffrey emailed uh, the text to me. I highly recommend it. I do. It's a very good book. Jeffrey's a good author. I'll put uh, a banner up here in the upper right hand corner of the video that you're watching so that you can check out my videos on Jeffrey Lilly's stories. There's uh, three videos, I believe three videos, uh, that have to do with Jeffrey Lilly's stories and he's got some other books at the printers as we speak and they should be hitting uh, the I believe they're going to be going to Amazon also very soon now this Bigfoot and Stellar Jay's River Day by Jeffrey David Lilly Jr. is available on Kindle and on paperback there's links in the description below for you to go check those out the great children's books uh, we do need to uh, get our children aware of these beings and uh, I can't think of a better way to start the process this will get them asking questions about it and you can have that conversation you can let them know that there are some nice ones there are some not so nice ones just the same type of a conversation that you would have if you were talking to them about the difference in people and how to be aware of people so yeah uh, go ahead and check out that uh, descript links in the description there's of course other things down there we got the Bigfoot Keychain, books by David Politis, some Bigfoot uh, t shirts, trail cams, and so on and so forth. So, enough of uh, channel maintenance uh, being talked about. Let's get on to another story here. In York County, South Carolina, the fall of 1986. This one reads This happened to me when I was 13 in upstate South Carolina. It was in the fall and it was uh, late afternoon. We my family live in a very secluded part of Piedmont area. The area is located in York County, South Carolina. Located uh, on the road that I live is a hollow that branches off into a wooded area. During the fall, both sides of that hollow bear wild grapes. My mother, Joyce, had asked me to ride up the road uh, to get my father's paper. You see, I'd forgotten after the school bus dropped me off to pick up the Evening Herald. Anyway, I got on my Red Murray bike and rode up the road. My plot hound, Butler, plodded along beside me as I biked up the road. The forest on my left, field on my right, I began to notice a, a smell very similar to a yard that had been freshly cut with wild onions growing in it. My dog noticed at first and began to slow down. That was when I looked into the hollow and I saw what has changed my life from that moment on. The creature stood about as tall as a small shed and was very large. It was covered with a light brown hair that showed up amber like an aura around its body when the sun hit it. The face was very much like a mongoloid man and the eyes, hard to tell, brown. It was eating grapes and its teeth were yellowish. My dog left at this point and went back toward the house. 
it looked at me and moved in my direction in a curious notion. I became scared and left towards home. I did look back to, to see it lumber over the fence. It came out of the forest only briefly and went back. My uncle was the only one who saw it again after that. Wow, now that's a strange encounter. <laughs> and there's a Bigfoot standing there eating grapes and, uh, and just saw the boy. That's odd, that smell of uh, fresh cut lawn with onions. I know what he's talking about. I, when you uh, get the wild onions in your yard and you cut the grass and you, and you smell that. And that's the uh, first time I've ever heard that uh, connected to a Bigfoot sighting, however. But again, another detail of a uh, Sasquatch standing there eating grapes. Just another detail that we can add to our overall picture of uh, these people, the Sasquatch people. And they are a people, as we are learning. I have heard them referred to as North America's Aboriginals by a member of the military. It looks like we have uh, enough time to do another one here. We're going to go to Spartan County, South Carolina in the summer of 1993. This one reads, I live in a small town in Inman. In 1993, my son and I had a terrifying experience. We live in a wooded area. We were on our deck trying out a new telescope we had just bought that day. It was a bright moonlit night. My small dog was walking out at the edge of the woods near a patch of blackberry bushes. She kept barking for two hours at something, so I got concerned and walked out there to see what she was barking at. When I got over there and took a look, there was this large, hairy thing crouched down in the gully, which I thought was a large chow dog. So I stomped my foot and yelled at it to go away. When I did, it stood up like a human on two feet. It had light gray hair, and it was six feet tall, had large shoulders and no neck. It had a flat face. It took a long time for it to turn around, like in slow motion. Then it started running into the woods, knocking down trees, making a loud noise. Then we started running so fast I could not feel the ground. My son is six foot four in height and very muscular, but he said he felt scared like a child. All we could hear was screaming. My small grandchildren were outside and saw the monster too. They were screaming and crying. We grabbed the children and pushed them inside the house. The next day we went into the woods to check the area. We saw gray hair on the trees and large footprints. My neighbor had a large garden close to the woods with lots of squash and other vegetables. When we checked further in the woods, we found huge piles of squash on the ground with large bites where it bit out of them. This thing had hair all over its body and very strong. It cracked small trees down like matchsticks. We have lots of swamps around here. People have seen lots of black and brown Bigfoot creatures near the swamps. Wow, and here we go right back into the scary, terrifying ones. And it seems that we just can't get away from those kind, can we? I mean, there was the one that uh, just stand there eating grapes, which is kind of funny. And uh, we do have those encounters, and uh, those are the encounters that uh, we like to, uh, to have. But uh, all too often, it's a scary type where they're uh, just angry and violent and strong and screaming and scaring people. So, yeah, they're out there, and they do these things. It's a terrifying situation. That's why I started Bigfoot Anonymous. These things affect people. All these stories that I've read, the person has said something about, my life has been changed since this encounter. That's why I started Bigfoot Anonymous. That's why people send in their stories to be read on these channels. They have stated over and over on Dixie Cryptid and How to Hunt, 
all these other channels that I'm personally uh, love to listen to, that they're glad that they got it off their chest. They wrote it down and they felt better and they send it in and uh, these hosts read their encounters and it helps these people. So I figured, well, let's take it another step further. Here's a Facebook page just for you to do that. It's private, you have to join and you're not allowed to take those stories out of that room, okay? And I'm not going to take any stories out of that room from this channel. So it's there, Bigfoot Anonymous. Got the link down below in the, in the description. There's rooms that you can go into and talk amongst yourselves. Let's get some conversations going. Uh, let's help each other, okay? Anyways, uh, thanks for uh, watching. Like, share, subscribe. Check all the links in the description. Don't forget to Jeffrey Lilly's book. We'll see you in the next one. Once again, another great story. Thanks for tuning in. Please share your encounter. Email us, bfrealencounters at mail.com. Your story is very important. We will treat it with the respect that it deserves. Also, be sure to smash the like button, share, and subscribe. Thanks once again. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Watch out for our next video. Maybe we'll feature yours. Have a great day. Oh!